This is Tyler with American Implement in Scott City, Kansas. And today we're going to go over the uh, settings and hookup of a 1775 with a 5E uh, electric drive and IRHD. So uh, bear with me. We're going to go through and hook it up to the tractor and how each hydraulic hose go to what place. Here we're looking at the back of an 8R tractor. What we're gonna have here is our power beyond ports, is our pressure for the red one, for the top one, and then blocks our return for our power beyond. And then we have our motor return here. Down at the bottom with the yellow is our case drain. Uh, that's for like vacuum returns. Uh, that's that low pressure line. And then you got your SCVs. And we're gonna get this mess of uh, hoses untangled here and uh, figure out which one goes where and show you how that all hook up and why we put it in what port. All right, now the fun part is getting all these hoses lined out and knowing which way is which, and it is a mess of spider webs. But first things first, you wanna make sure those tips are all nice and clean. Also, make sure the SCVs and everything like that, the couplers are cleaned out. Um, we love service calls, but we're just trying to alleviate downtime. Uh, we don't wanna to have to come out and put some new mower rings and everything, because the everything leaks is gonna get cleaned up. So first things first, we wanna put this case drain in, and it's a flat face fitting. Um, it's pretty obvious on it, um, and usually it's got a yellow tag on it to match up with that yellow uh, that he's fitting down there at the bottom. So we'll put it in first. A um, couple tips on that sometimes is if you have problems with that popping out, make sure you get, don't have it snagged up too much with the other hoses. Um, also, we've seen we've had to replace the tip um, every couple years. It gets wore out for some reason on those flat face. So next we're gonna hook up is the uh, IRHD. It's the big hoses with the big ends on them. Um, they're gonna go in our Power Beyond ports. Remember that's that red cap and that black cap there on the left bottom. Uh, so most times you'll be, they'll be marked P and R. So you got your pressure and return. So this black one here that Tim's got is gonna be our return port. It's gonna go in the bottom. So uh, other tip on this is make sure the tractor's off when you're hooking these all up. It makes it a lot easier. Um, having return on there so we'll go ahead and hook up that return or the pressure on there on the red one well everything's nice and new like this tractor is it makes it a lot easier to snap them in so next we're going to have the next big hoses and that's going to be our frame control um, there's going to be three quarter hoses once again these are going number one scv um, so our green tab on those those zip ties that are green are usually your pressure um, and those are gonna go on the right side of that SCV. So go ahead and put those in there. Nice and clean hole to put that into. There we go. Like I said, it gets to be a science with all these hoses. Um, just making sure everything's lined out right. Um, also, if you look back on this uh, section back in here, We've got them where they crisscrossed on us a little bit, but um, a lot of times your vacuum hoses for the left side is going to be here, so that's vacuum number one. And then your other vacuum hoses are going to come off this right side and it'll be vacuum number two. So we have vacuum hoses number one down there. Uh, we'll get those plugged into SCV number two. The other thing too, remember which uh, port you use for which coupler or for which deal. Um, no, oh, this got mixed up. They got the return on green now and the pressure on yellow. So sometimes you got to read the uh, zip ties and make sure they're correct. But also one way to say on that one is it's got those holes on the end of that uh, coupler. It's a one-way, it's a one-way coupler there. So don't want to go out. And on this deal, we're putting the return port rather than on our motor returns on our vacuum back in the SCVs. On these newer tractors, we don't have to run back through the uh, return port that on the bottom there. Um, but one thing you always want to do is make sure that you put that SCV in detent when you're kicking or put it in float when you're kicking it off. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the uh, right side vacuum, uh, vacuum number two motor. So. Uh, in, look at the end of the coupler and make sure you got the return port on the left. So, um, this planter does have uh, back, or a fertilizer system on there. 
Um, we use the marker lines to do that rather than run all new hoses all the way to the front. So uh, we'll get those put in the number four SCV. So with this planter, um, with the technology on it, being an electric dry planter, it's got vacuum automation. So we want to make sure we remember which SCV we assigned for which, because in the cab, we're going to have to go in there and assign those. So then it will control it automatically and not have to adjust going through the field all the time. So uh, that should get us all hooked up. Next, we have our electrical. Rolling around, you got your nice silver one. That's our main can uh, terminal. So that's gonna go in our implement connector on the back of that. Also, you have your gray. Um, that's for a foot switch for the, uh, if you have like this one does fertilizer, it is gonna be for your foot switch for the ray controller. And then also we have our power. So um, this one won't use it because we don't have electric uh, air compressor. So we won't need that one. But we will need these two and we'll hook those up into the implement connector on the top. And for the purpose of this demonstration, this tractor does not have all the harnesses that we need. So from here on out, it's pretty self-explanatory what goes where. So we'll get that one plugged in so then we can see the monitoring system. Okay, also on this planter where it's electric drive planter, it's going to have a planter gener uh, PTO generation. Um, so that's what this harness would go to. Uh, we do not have the PTO mounted, the generator mounted yet, um, but that's where we'd mount down there and then this harness would hook up. The other options on these planters are planter generation, so you have a generator on the back. Um, downfalls on that is it takes a lot more hydraulics to run it, plus you'd have to have batteries on there, so when you're picking up and you're not running hydraulics, it's gonna kick off the generation. So the PTO generator is probably the most economical and the best way to go. Um, does give it a little bit more extra to hook up, so.